You do not know what pain is yet. You will learn. You look lonely. I can fix that. Sometimes, strange and unexplainable things happen to us on this journey through life. At times, we may recognize them for what they are almost immediately. And then, there are times where we are just going along in our lives and one day, it hits you. A situation, a person, or an event that has come into existence in our world may have been something that is beyond just chance encounter or experience. Divine intervention? A soul ascension experience? Maybe. I've often heard it said that we meet people for a reason. We meet them when we are ready for the lesson or they are ready for the lesson we are to bring to them. As the Buddhist philosophy says, the teacher arrives when the student is ready. I've always resonated with this concept. So what exactly is divine intervention? How can we recognize it sooner so that we can fully immerse ourselves in the moment and emerge a more enlightened and connected to our spiritual path to become those enlightened beings that our Creator intended us to be all along? These are just some of the few things I've been thinking about lately, and I will share with you what my future plans are today to get you thinking about your spiritual path and how my future opportunity will take me away from you for a little while, but I promise I won't leave you for too long, but I must go for several reasons. I will explain as we go through the episode today, so stay with me. Welcome back, my family, and if you're new here, we're glad that you found us. This is a different kind of podcast where we dive deep into the human psyche and take some hard looks at our dark side and do our very best to find the light in every situation. If you don't resonate with what we bring you here, that's okay, as we're not for everyone. For our like-minded, subscribe and visit our site at tdsothc.com for more info. And as always, you can find us on your favorite platform. And with that said, let's dive in. So divine intervention, what is it? Well, that depends on who you ask, as to the answer you'll receive, of course. As various cultures believe that there are many different kinds of divine action, including miracles, divine revelations, divine providence, and divine retribution. Expression Acts of God Typically used to describe an event outside of human control for which people cannot be held responsible and that no plausible reason for such occurrence can be established through logical thinking. You know, no rational explanations. These interventions are believed to be from God or angelic beings, so I suppose my question would be, if such a God exists and is all-knowing, 
and all-powerful and has to intervene on occasion, where does that leave fate and destiny? As people may argue the concept of free will. But again, I would ask, would free will not change our predestined fate and our destiny if there really is such a thing? I don't know very many things of this religious nature, and for me that's okay, because what I do understand more and more as my life has progressed is that we are all one, you know, and at one time or another we're right and we're wrong about so many things, and that too is okay, because I believe we are here to learn and to grow consciously And what we refuse to learn, we are destined to repeat, they say. Through my years, I have also come to the conclusion that we as humans have fought against such innate things like time, for example, which does not really exist if you think about it, which is also ironic because we fight the aging process as if we have all the time in the world. We don't. Our existence in this human form is finite, but time, that is infinite. We fight amongst ourselves through our egos, as if all of these momentary disagreements really matter at the end of the day. They don't. We should, in fact, only be concerned with fighting for what's right. And yet some may say, You know, what's right for one is not always right for others. That's true, but I'm talking about not the personal right and wrong here. I'm I'm really talking about the collective experience. What is right for humanity overall? We have become less self-aware and less concerned with our brothers and our sisters of the world to a point where apathy and indifference and division seems to be the norm in how we live our lives today. We have in fact forgotten what it means to be human, as in mankind, as in humankind. The word kind is there for a reason, but are we really kind anymore? Many of you know that I am not necessarily a believer in God per se, but more of a believer in a higher consciousness, the universal connectedness of all living beings, in that we are all one universal family, many souls experiencing this life through many different bodies and paths, but ultimately heading in the same direction, to the same destination, death, and hopefully ascension to our next adventure. Evolving at different velocities, yes, but still evolving, whether consciously or not. I believe the evolution of the human species is now at a standstill for the most part, and some may actually understand that we are about to witness a rapid and massive decline in the human population, like we have never experienced before. As the wicked who walk amongst us have finally put that nail in the collective coffin. You all know what I mean by that. I don't feel the need to speak more of it into existence because it's actually breaking my heart to think about how so many people are still in denial of what has taken place. Or they've just accepted it. As maybe that's what Mother Earth needs at this moment in time. I call bullshit on that narrative that's weak and a fatalist attitude and completely unacceptable again that brings me to the question of God if there really is a God that many profess was this God's plan all along to let the evil run amok on the entire human race for their wicked self-indulgent gains I still can't wrap my head around it as to how easy it happened. Where's humanity's divine intervention now, God? How could we have been so blind for so long? 
I, like many, have cried so many tears for what has already begun and will transpire over the next several years as I feel powerless. And although I knew there were evil people with world domination plans, I just never realized how the masses would go along with it so easily and refuse to use their brains to think critically, to do anything to save humanity and themselves or future generations. Will we even have future generations? I mean, we are not that far along in history that we could forget the human travesties of World War I and World War II. We can now look back and understand that those events were about nothing but bankers' greed, as they funded all sides with our hard-earned monies. From the sweat off our brows, from the sacrifices of our loved ones who believed they were doing what was right, we the people have paid the cost of those events through monetary gains and power for the richest families on this earth and the mass murder of millions of people who found themselves caught up in the turmoil of it all. And here we find ourselves again. But this time, the war is different, and that the propaganda is pulling at our heartstrings, and the love of our planet, and your grandma. As in, you must conform to the latest narrative, or you're a horrible person and should be banned from everything including life itself. I say fuck that. If you know in your heart that you are a good person and you know their agendas, you are the exact ones they are eventually coming for. Yes, I'm sure I'm on the list. But as I see it, if you're not on the list, you're doing it all wrong, (laughs) right? As I've stated in another episode, I'll be the one at the camp with the escape plan. So follow me. But back to the wars we have witnessed and been a party to. We cannot deny that through our ignorance at that time, we supported it. We celebrated the heroes who came back if they were lucky enough to return to their homeland. As if what they did was honorable and noble. I used to believe that the Holocaust was a lie. I now understand it wasn't but I don't believe it was the narrative we've been fed for decades in that it was a world holocaust. Millions upon millions of people were sacrificed. For what? For the greed of a few, all too powerful men who could care less about humanity? I find my mind often wondering, what the fuck is wrong with the human mind as we are thousands, maybe millions of years in existence here on Earth, so they tell us, and we've not learned the lesson yet that man is not supposed to be a brutal beast? Low vibrations keep us in a state of constant war with each other, is all I can think of, when I know we are supposed to live in a world of peace, of love, and true unity. And now we sit at the brink of yet another possible war that may take us all out in a moment's notice. Is this what we really want? There are still so many people who are not seeing the truth of it all. Although I may not have all the answers as to how we got here in this current predicament, nor how we can fix this out-of-control situation, but I pray for our children and their children. I pray that they have a future that is free of oppression and enslavement that looms ever so close with each passing day, with the current plans that are being implemented by a few psychopaths running the show from behind the curtain. If there was ever a need for divine intervention, it is right fucking now. There's no one coming to save us not a human form, nor invisible spiritual being. There's no trusting the plan. This is not a movie or a dress rehearsal, people. There is only us in this moment, right now. We are the intervention. We are the plan. And I ask you to look into your imagined eyes of your future grandchildren or children 
And imagine what you would say when they ask you, what did you do to stop the madness that you are allowing to transpire today? We can all do something. We just have to unite and be that plan. We are, in fact, running out of time. You can start by a simple action. It is non-compliance or acquiescence with the plan of the psychopaths who wish to control and enslave each and every human. Which brings me to one of the background compositions I have put in this episode today. It is called Hireth, spelled H-I-R-A-E-T-H, by a composer I've only recently discovered named Scott Buckley. And I found myself resonating a lot with his music, but this one in particular, I had to look up what that title of the song meant, as I don't believe I had ever heard this word. Even though I know I have experienced Hyrith many times, and especially recently. It basically means an emotional state that affects old souls and deep thinkers, which I believe describes me to a T. It is an untranslatable Welsh word that describes a longing for home, a place, a feeling that no longer exists or maybe never existed. Also, homesickness for a place from our past that we can't return to, or even those we've never been to. Nostalgia for your past self, for the people who are long gone, or the emotions you used to feel. It can also describe a sense of yearning for imaginary places, feelings, and people. It may feel as if you suddenly take a glance into a previous life and connect with the people and things that existed long ago, or at least could have possibly existed. It is believed that old souls and deep thinkers are individuals who are more prone to feelings such as nostalgia and unexplainable sadness, as they are believed to be more intuitive, better connected with their inner self, more likely to remember their past lives. You may or may not resonate with past lives, but more and more experiences are being reported that leads many to believe that there's something more to this than we, you know, than we understand. Such as the little boy, he was able to describe his life as a World War II pilot who was shot down and died leaving behind his family. He knew his name and the name of his family and those in his military unit, where he lived, many things that no child would ever be able to just make up, right? So that's just one example. There's many, many more. Regardless, I believe as a practicing Buddhist that our souls are eternal and we have had many incarnations and that for the most part, we have soul families that we travel with to learn from and to teach life lessons to. Some refer to these souls as soulmates, twin flames, karmic partners, etc. All I know is that in 1999, my life literally changed when I found the way. Through philosophical studies and learning to accept my humanness, to accept that this incarnation would be only as painful and beautiful as my mind would allow. Sometimes I have wavered from my spiritual path, that's true. We all do. But then there are those divine moments that we're talking about that puts me right back on my path with a deeper conviction and next level ascension. We should remember that we've made it through all the changes in our lives thus far and whatever transitions you may be going through, remind yourself that transitions are sometimes a restructuring and a reconfiguring of your soul's path. Ultimately, you will come out on the other side. And I'd suggest that you seek some genuine help from other loving souls who will be there to help you rebuild when you do. You don't necessarily have to be an old soul, though. 
to experience the Hyrith as we all have felt this emotional state at some point in our lives, but we had no idea there was a name for it. I certainly didn't, and now you do. <laughs> the feeling when you get staring into a starlit sky or the full moon, an unexplainable longing, but you don't know, you know, for what or for who you long for. The stars look very distant, and yet, you feel as if they are calling out to you. Like some kind of lost homeland, you know, trying to reach you from a faraway galaxy. Or is it the stardust speaking inside you and reviving your connection with the universe? As I've heard, we're actually made of stardust, but who knows, right? All I'm trying to say here today is that I have had one of those rare experiences recently and I have no idea if it was a divine intervention, a spiritual ascension calling my name, or perhaps just my imagination. Whatever label one, you know, wants to assign to it, I know it has happened for a reason at this very moment in my life. And I don't care the reasons why anymore, as I believe I have, you know, I have to leave for a time. And I have to follow my intuition to begin a journey that will lead me to who knows where and who knows what I might find out there. But I am taking the trip to the coast. I will be traveling to one of those retreat type of places where you can do the spiritual work, the Ayurvedic healing, meditation in the mountains, some yoga in the morning, some horseback riding on the beach at dusk, bonfires on the beach at night and maybe meet my dearly departed daughter's spirit animal in the ocean she's so loved and connected spiritually with dolphins so much that I choose to believe her spirit is now traveling the earth with them at this moment I'm getting things in order as my lease will be up soon and I'm free then to leave for as long as I so desire I may return and I may not, as that's the best part of going on this journey. I have lived my life so far being everything I could for everyone in my tribe, and now it's time that I go out into this great big world and live every moment that I have left in wonderment, excitement, and joy. I'm going to completely immerse myself in this experience and to see where it leads me. I may actually take a journal and write it all down so I can relive the experience when I'm old and feeble-minded. <laughs> I can just read about how great it was. So now, hopefully you understand why I must take this break from doing these podcasts for a bit. I do have a few podcasts in the bin, as they say, you know, yet to share with you. I still have a little time before I leave, but just know this. I have spent the past two years of my life sharing many topics and some very personal experiences with you, my beautiful family, and I'll miss you. And should I return one day, I will be coming back a much more rejuvenated human with new experiences to share with you. If I never make it back though, it probably means I fell off the mountain. <laughs> meditated so hard that I just like fell off right or I met my other half and we sailed away to a deserted island so either way it's good so you can always re-listen to prior episodes I'll leave them here for you you see I believe we're all born for a reason we all have something to give and something wonderful to share with the world one thing I have not shared with you yet is that I have always known that I am one of the many light workers who are here in this time in human form. I've always known deep within my soul that I am here to help the humans ascend to their highest level and find their own healing and compassion along their journey. And man, has it been hard, right? But whoever said that good thing should come easy, right? This is why I now understand the reason I started this podcast two years ago. 
to share some knowledge and insights with as many people as possible, as I have a global audience, and I know I have touched many of your hearts and your minds out there. I know my abilities to create change in this world is limited, but if I have helped or awakened just one soul, it has all been worth it. Despite the hardships that may arise in our lives and our relationships, we must always remind ourselves to accept our current circumstances and recognize that everything happens for a reason. Usually the end result is that we... You know, we're led to a higher and better self if we recognize that everything truly is temporary and seek to find a lesson in each experience as well. We can use it to grow in our evolution and our spiritual ascensions. Even though I understand that I am one of those awakened beings and have at times wanted to say, you know, I just want to give up and just say, fuck it, if people don't give a damn, why should I? Or maybe I should just be like the brain dead masses and just do me and let the chips fall where they may. But then I realize that I have a mission here and regardless of the apathy that surrounds me sometimes, I must continue on this path that has called my name from the ethers to assist in whatever ways that I can help humanity with our ascension, no matter how small my attributions may be. I must do what I can, when I can, where I can. So I will continue that mission, but first I must check out and take this journey to find my peace again, collect my thoughts, and recharge. And although we may sometimes have to walk this earth alone, in the physical form, we should realize that we are never truly alone and that there are many of us who are silently crying out for the love and connectedness of our spiritual counterparts. We are here. We hear you. We are with you. Just close your human eyes and see us through your third eye. That's where you will find us. When we learn how to block out the noise of the world, all of those distractions, we can begin to connect with our inner guidance, our inner knowings, to manifest our desires into reality, to experience spontaneity, freedom, adventure, creativity, expansion and growth, increase our ascension progress. Spiritual gifts become abundant, as well as our abilities and our talents and communication, our individuality, our self-expression, encouragement, and yes, open-mindedness. We must continue to listen to our guidance from our intuition and our inner wisdoms to share courageous acts of love for ourselves and others. Honestly, there really is nothing more important than this in the scheme of things. We just have to trust ourselves even when, you know, when the road seems rough and and really, really long. Remember your abilities that helped you make it this far will continue to guide you moving forward. So recently, I was in a store where I used to take my pops shopping when he was no longer able to drive his car due to some vision problems. And I came across a CD of Andreas Bocelli. He loved Andreas' music. Although I have not purchased a CD in years, I was drawn to buy it. And I realized later, while listening to it on repeat for several days, you know, driving here and there, that the one song he used to play a lot, and one that I love too, is Caruso. It's an operatic song written in 1986 by Italian musician Lucio Dalla. It's a very beautiful song, and it tells a story about the pain and the longing of a man who is about to die while he's looking into the eyes of a girl who was very dear to him. And Dalla imagined Caruso singing for a young woman with green eyes with whom he had fallen deeply in love with. 
As I've said, I've been listening to it for several days on loop. And it just so happens that the track number is five. And I've been seeing 555 almost daily lately. And if you know the meaning of numbers, five represents big changes coming soon. So I get it, Pops, and thank you. I'm ready for the changes to come. Funny thing is today, it's a special day, as my Pops would have turned 85 years young today if he was still, you know, on this earthly plane. I remember on his last birthday giving him a card that referenced his 100th birthday. And he laughed and he said, we should all strive to live life to the fullest no matter the number of years we are given. I had no way of knowing that that would be his last birthday that I would ever spend with him. I miss him so much as he was my constant, my teacher of life. He was my inspiration, my hero. He was my champion. And yes, a member of my soul family that I hope to connect with on my journey. Love and miss you, Pops. Before I end the episode today, I would like to take a moment to speak to someone specific out there. If they are even listening and say what I did not really get the opportunity to say before when it mattered most and that is I am sorry just know that we are humans and should always seek to rectify wrongs we may have done either knowingly or unknowingly it is never my intentions to hurt anyone most of all you I will always adore you even if we never speak again I thank you for showing up and bringing your form of love language and the lessons, always sending you healing vibes, my friend. So family, this has been an awakening moment for sure, and yet I already feel at peace with what I am about to embark on. I will be back soon with a couple more episodes before I adjourn for a bit, so stay with me, and as always, the quote of the day. Today's quote is from my favorite book that I have ever read, The Celestine Prophecy. And I will be bringing you a podcast on it soon, before I go, because I kind of think I'm going on one of those Celestine journeys. And now the quote of the day. It's been said that there's a new spiritual awakening occurring in human culture. An awakening of sorts brought about by a critical mass of individuals who are experiencing their lives as a spiritual journey in which we are being led forward by a succession of mysterious, meaningful coincidences, seeking first to awaken us and then to guide us by a spiritual connection to the unfolding of our intended destiny. By James Redfield. The book, again, is Celestine Prophecy. And as always, I thank everyone for showing up and um, taking this little journey here with me. Wishing you all love and light. And I'm going to see you on the next episode. Have a blessed day.